Hello, this is Socially Triggered, and this video is going to be about equality of opportunity, and uh, it's also going to look at uh, whether equality and freedom can work together, okay? Uh, one of the things that happened recently was I posted a video, uh, I forget what it was about, I think it was UBI or something like that, and somebody posted on it that they, they thought my ideas sucked. <laughs> you know, I'm a capitalist, so... I just suck, just regardless, whatever I say. Um, and they were socialists. So um, basically, they were talking about how uh, there's a thing called left-wing uh, libertarianism. And I was thinking, what the heck is le left-wing uh, libertarianism? Because, okay, so if you think about left-wing, left-wing usually means controlling. I know people on the left think of themselves as pro-freedom, but that's not actually the case. Um, left wing generally means controlling because they want the state involved. And the more you get the state involved, the more controls that basically get placed on the population within that state. <laughs> so uh, left wing is generally controlling. And libertarianism is more about freedom. If you think about libertarian people, they are generally the ones that seek ultimate freedom. You have complete autonomy. <laughs> You know that you can basically do whatever you want and because as long as you use the non-aggression principle that you do not inflict harm upon others and that's one of the tenets of libertarianism that you do not inflict harm upon others and therefore they wouldn't inflict harm on you and as long as you abide by that you can pretty much do anything so if you want to do drugs you do drugs if as long as those drugs don't impact anyone else so that's, uh, uh, you don't have to wear a seatbelt. That's another libertarian thing. Like we, uh, you can choose to wear a seatbelt because you, you want to make that rational choice that, hey, I, I want to protect myself while driving. <laughs> and, uh, but you're, it's your decision. And the society shouldn't impose that decision upon you. So that's sort of left, uh, that's, that's libertarianism in its, general sense that it's all about personal decisions and personal freedom so it's a very free uh flowing kind of uh system now left wing <laughs> usually adds in a component of equality and those on the left they really love the idea of equality equality is the ultimate good within society. And even when I was young, I remember always being told that everybody's equal and we're all, you know, we're all the same and you know, we're all equal. And that was somehow some great thing. And, you know, it's usually these left-wing teachers that kind of push that idea of equality. And um, one of the things that I found was that, hey, maybe people are not equal. <laughs> people are different. And that's actually a good thing. Uh, the reason I I, I see it as a good thing, is our society actually needs people that are different. We need, uh, we need people that are good at certain things and not good at other things. We need people that are diverse in their skills. And that diversity creates differences, um, but it also creates opportunities to, to work together to achieve something much bigger than ourselves. The, the best example I could give is like a clock. If you look, if you open up a clock, like a, your like a pocket watch or something like that, you'll see that it has like a whole bunch of different like sized, uh, you know, doodads in, <laughs> in the back of it. You know, it'll have like a whole bunch of different uh, like gears and widgets and different things that make the, the pocket watch work. And those different sizes and the different functions means that the, those pieces are not the same. They're not equal but they all work together to create something that's greater than themselves. They all have a purpose. And that's why uh, inequality and sometimes uh, uh, when people are not equal, it's actually a good thing because it, you can actually achieve uh, amazing things. If everybody was the same, that'd be really, really boring and really, really not practical for society because society needs people with different skills. So, let me explain left-wing egalitarianism, uh, left-wing libertarianism a bit more. So left-wing uh, means that they want 
first of all, equality of opportunity and equality of outcome, which is two big things. Um, so equality of opportunity means that everybody should basically, if we're, we're all in a race, and uh, according to left-wing uh, philosophy, we should all get put at the very same starting point, and we should all um, have the same uh, handicaps and disadvantages or advantages, and we should all be started the same way, and we should all be able to run the same speed. And what you can imagine how that race would run, it'd be like if everyone's treated, if everyone's basically the same, and it would end up that everyone would finish at the same. So ideally, under the whole left-wing kind of philosophy, is you have equal opportunities, and then you also have equal outcomes. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Now, we know that that doesn't happen because uh, people are of different ages, for example. So they would be starting that race at a different point. Um, people are different skilled. So some people can run fast. Some people can't run as fast. Some people can't even run. Um, so there's different <laughs> differences that play out. And that's why um, the, the starting of that race never works out. That it, it, and as a result, the outcomes are never the same either. So uh, that's really what happens in, in a real world. Um, but those people on the left try to force the real world to fit this ideological world that that if, if only we lived in a perfect world. And what they try to do is fit uh, this imperfect world that we live in into their perfect world. Uh, Plato actually talked about this. He, uh, he saw that the world was imperfect and that there was this concept of perfect things uh, that uh, if only we could achieve those perfect things, um, like a perfect ball, and everything is not quite perfect in our world. So if we could just achieve that perfect thing. And um, actually, I don't even see that as being perfect, believe it or not. I actually believe that inequality is ideal. <laughs> because as I said, it's good that we have differences. It's good that we have different results. Um, makes life more interesting and also makes it so that everybody in a way has uh, a, a role to play if they're willing to work and do what they need to do. Um, one thing that I, I always see is this, coming from the right actually, is this concept of equal opportunity, that they, they really push for e equal opportunity. And one of the things that happens with equal opportunity is you have to think of how, how would you achieve that? So one thing you could do is say, okay, well, education, that's a good start. That if you're of this age, like age five, let's say, and you're going to, you're going to go to school. So everyone age five, so we've already sort of leveled the playing field in terms of age. So they're all starting at the same point. They all have to go to school. And then you say at school, you're all gonna learn the same things. Okay, so we've, we're, we're creating equal opportunities. And those people that are at school, not only are they gonna learn the same things, they're all gonna have the same standardized tests. Okay, so we've created equal age, we've created equal education, <laughs> and we've created equal standard that they have to follow. However, not everybody gets the same score. And not everybody even enters into that system equally. Now, here's, here's the truth of the matter. If you have two parents at home, you will be better off than somebody that has a single mom or a single dad raising you. And what happens is that difference makes a huge difference when that five-year-old goes to school. Because if you have two parents, well, they can sort of divvy up the tasks of raising the children. And that, it, that, that plays out in that child's life. You know, 
So what happens is that child might be a little bit better off that they, their parents spent a little bit more time with them, maybe taught them the ABCs or whatever it was a little bit sooner than the other kids that didn't have two parents at home. So that child has a bit of an advantage and good parents want to give their children a bit of an advantage. Okay. Uh, you want to encourage good parenting, right? So, you, you know, parents should try to give their kids as many opportunities as possible. So one of the ways you give your kids opportunities is you, you teach them stuff, you, you show them stuff, you, you give them as much experience as possible so that they can use that experience to get opportunities. So already the, that perfect world of everybody at the same age, everybody uh, um, having like uh, the same education, everybody having the same test. Now that same test, sure, there's a standardized test. Um, however, some people are smart. Some people aren't so smart. And that standardized test, sure, it's standardized. It stays there and that's fine. However, what ends up happening is you'll get students that show aptitude. And what you want to do is generally create what's called a special program. And there's two sides of that, actually. <laughs> One is uh, you want to take the, the best students and you want to put them into a place where they can learn at an accelerated rate because generally you know there, there there can be fairly extreme differences between the top kids and the bottom kids so what you want to do is um, you want to kind of separate the two because the top kids if they're constantly learning at the level of the the bottom kids <laughs> you're really uh, not giving them the opportunities that they need. And if you're putting those bottom kids and they're trying to learn at the level of even the middle kids, um, they're gonna be always at a disadvantage. They're, they're just not gonna meet the level, the standard that's required. Now you can't bring everybody down. That's not a good system. So generally what you'll find is that standardized test, you'll get different scoring within it just based on people's skills and knowledge and you know work habits and whatever and that will make you realize that hey maybe we should break up this class into uh the better students and the not so good students and um that's just life <laughs> that some people are better at school than others and some people are just smarter than others and so you divide them up and that's what you should be doing However, what we currently do is not that. <laughs> well, we, 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 we focus on equality. So we're basically holding those brilliant kids back and we're bringing those really not so smart kids to a expecting them to achieve a level that they probably can't achieve. So both sides are being underserved. Whereas if you had inequality, like built into the system, well, you'd say, hey, look, let's give these people the right opportunities and that they need to best serve their level and needs and skills and so forth. So here's how capitalism works versus socialism. So under socialism, you have everything being equal. You have the standardized test. You have the people going to school at the same time. You have uh, everybody in the same class and working to that same standard. And you have no competition because that that kind of creates inequality when people compete. So what ends up happening is you create sort of a very mediocre, <laughs> mediocre student at the end of the result. And that's even with the best students, they become mediocre as well. Whereas under a free market or capitalist system, what you, what, what you do is you provide op as many opportunities as possible. And the reason you do that is as long as there's a demand for that opportunity, you, you can you can make a profit off supplying the need that you know whatever it is to that demand um, whether it's a product or service you can you can make money off that because there's a demand there you can make money off the demand so the point is under a free market or capitalist society what generally you have is a greater amount of opportunities 
uh, you'll notice within socialist societies, it's usually very limited in terms of selection. Like, sure, they'll have milk, <laughs> but uh, generally it's like one type of milk. Whereas under a capitalist system, you'll have lots of variety. Like you'll have skim milk, you'll have 1%, 2%, 3%. <laughs> you know, you, you'll have like this brand of milk, you'll have this brand of milk, and you'll have like a whole bunch of variety. And that variety mean, it gives people the opportunity to choose the milk, in this case, that serves their needs. And that's the, the inequality of opportunities, because there's a whole bunch of opportunities that wouldn't be available to certain people. But there's so many opportunities that you can find the opportunities that meet your needs. So that's what generally ends up happening within a capitalist society. There, there might not be a quality of opportunity, but there's so many opportunities. And there's the freedom of opportunity that it actually serves people better than if you try to force everybody to have the same opportunities. So that's a little bit of how um, capitalism versus socialism works. Socialism is all about creating equality as if that's somehow a virtue, whereas capitalism is about recognizing the differences in people, recognizing the natural inequality and catering to those needs. It's actually very nice that way, that the it's trying to serve the needs of everyone the best way it can. And that's why I'm a big proponent of capitalism. And I wanted to address another point within this whole theory, um, is the idea of freedom versus uh, equality. So the only way you can make equality work is if you, as I said, with the classroom example, you impose a standard that sort of sets every, fixes everyone into a certain category or threshold or whatever it is. And you, you force controls on people. You, you basically, you know, if you're going to run that race with the five, five-year-olds, you, you see some of these guys, oh, they're sprinting. <laughs> you grab them, you pull them back so that they're all at the same point. And they're, and they're held either, either they're dragged forward or they're dragged back in order to all meet the same standard. And that's how equality works. It's all about keeping people all at the same standard. Uh, generally, you know, under a socialist system, they, they try to really impose that. One of the big things that they talk about is wealth inequality. Well, wealth inequality is the same idea. If you think about money being um, kind of related to uh, how, how much you can produce, how, you know, so if you're really good at producing stuff and you're really good at, you're really smart and you have talents, you can maybe become very wealthy <laughs> in a capitalist society. Um, but in a socialist society, they're going to say, well, that's not fair that this guy has more than this guy. And they're going to try to make the, the, the two the same. And they're going to take the wealth from the wealthy guy and give it to the poor guy and tell that they have roughly the same amount of wealth. And that's somehow fair. <laughs> rather than uh, letting the people just run their own race. Um, so generally, uh, in order to achieve equality, you have to take freedom away from people. Uh, you basically either hold them back or pull them to where you need them to be, or you take what they have to give it to somebody else. And those are all things that go against freedom. Freedom generally means property rights, things that you know, where you actually respect that individual's uh, autonomy. And um, that's really, really important with, cap with, with, with uh, libertarianism, that we, you respect that person's uh, autonomy. And that's why this whole idea of equality does not mesh with uh, freedom. You can't have both either have one or the, or the other. It's, they really don't work together because uh, once you start imposing these ideas of equality, the only way you can achieve it is through control and stealing the freedoms from all the people, rich or poor, in that society. So I hope this uh, explains why uh, uh, equality and uh, freedom just don't work together. 
and how this whole concept of left-wing egalitarianism or left-wing um, libertarianism just doesn't make sense. It's a it's an oxymoron, sort of like uh, in, uh, government intelligence. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. Um, so the point is, uh, you can't have one and and the other because they just don't work together. Um, so yeah, this has um, been my explanation of uh, how to um, make society better, I guess. Um, if you really want to make the society better and you want to, you know, and you worry about how can I help as many people as possible, what you want to do is actually, instead of focusing on equality as a goal and equality of opportunity or equality of outcome, uh, focus more on creating opportunities and what, how can I design a society that will create the most opportunities for the people within that society? And by creating as many opportunities as possible, the people within that society will find the opportunities that best serve their needs. And if you focus on that, rather than having the equality of opportunity, uh, you'll best serve those people. Um, what you want to have, and the reason you want to have as much opportunity as possible, is you want to have those people who um, maybe had really rough start in life. The, they're poor, and they 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 might not be healthy for whatever reason, and but they have something. They have some genius behind them. You want to have those people um, be able to find an opportunity that will help them excel so that they can actually reach uh, their full potential. And in a society where there's lots of opportunities, you can, that, can, that can happen, where those people's geniuses can be realized and they can become successful. The goal is that uh, you want a society where there's lots of mobility within that society people to go up or down. <laughs> it sounds weird that you would want people to maybe go down, but what you want to do is you want to reward people that have talent and punish people that don't have talent or don't utilize their talents. Um, one example I can give of this that really will hopefully make it much more clear about that whole upward and downward mobility and the importance of that is one of the things, one of the, the points that they always go on about in the, on the left is that there's these evil billionaires that are just born wealthy and they are, you know, they're useless in every way. And that they, they, they serve no purpose, but they just are wealthy and powerful. And that does happen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that doesn't happen. So what happens, like, there's actually a real real story of this uh, and hap it happened in Canada. One of, the, one of the biggest companies in Canada for the longest time was a company called Hudson's Bay. Hudson's Bay uh, was a trading, a fur trading company in Canada. And it was, it was like one of, it's, it's actually Canada's first major company, okay? And it was this massive company. It basically owned land-wise most of Canada. Okay, it was just basically it was this big, huge territory that they owned, and they would they would hunt beavers, and they would collect the pelts, and they would sell the pelts, and make lots of money. And it was this massive company, and it was a family-owned company. So they were insanely wealthy. Okay, and the family would just sort of run the company, and each generation would sort of say, "Okay, well, I have this great company." And they would, you know, let it run, um, but they wouldn't. They didn't really take interest in that company. They just assumed that it was always going to be there. And after like many years, each generation got a little less interested in the company itself. They they got further and further away from managing it. They didn't really see how to like make it grow. They didn't really take an interest in what they had because they just assumed they would always have it. And as a result, they became sort of like these non-talented people that just inherited wealth. And after a while, the company just fell apart. 
it went from this massive company, really massive company, to a company that's, I think, going to be bought out, or if it's not already bought out by Edens or one of these other kind of failing companies, it's just, it's, it's a company that's gone out of business. And it still semi-exists, but it's, it's not to the level of what it used to be, not even close. And the point is that um, if, if you don't have talent, if you don't show uh, like work ethic and all these kind of things to keep your business going, what will happen is over time it will fail. And so it doesn't matter if you're super, super rich, you can become super, super poor. <laughs> you know, there is that mobility that happens in society. And that mobility really uh, is accentuated in a capitalist free market society because you really always have to be on your game and your children have to be on your, their game in order to maintain that wealth that you create. So this is something that is not really understood by a lot of people on the left that they see that the, they see wealth as being entrenched and it just sort of, all, those, those people will always be wealthy. But if you, look at, if you look at the top 500 companies in the world or top thousand even companies in the world, most of them have had like, you know, most of them have only had a very short life. Even like the ones that we can think of that are really, really big, like Amazon or, you know, these are like newer companies. Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, they're fairly young companies. And the original founders are still around. Um, older companies like uh, maybe like um, IBM, it's still a fairly young company. There's not that many companies that last, that are in the top 100 that are, or top 1,000, I should say, uh, that are actually fairly, that are really old, like centuries old, <laughs> you know. So wealth is very transient. And it just changes hands all the time. Who's who's at the top? Who's at the bottom? It's it's not a constant. It's not like you get this generational wealth. It's not like uh, the feudal lords of of old, where they would be like literally kings and queens for centuries. That doesn't happen under a capitalist system. It does happen under a socialist system, though. Because if you look at like a good example of this is North Korea, it's like a dictatorship. Uh, it's one generation after another, all controlling the country and each getting more and more controlling of that country. <laughs> so that it does happen under socialism that doesn't happen under capitalism. And I, I want that to be kind of understood as well, that um, you, if you want uh, freedom, <laughs> You, you want, and you want kind of this upward and downward mobility, and you want these opportunities to be created, then you want a capitalist system which allows those opportunities to be made and realized by the people within that society. So this is why you want a free market and a capitalist system to live under, because it's the best system to prevent, uh, provide uh, you know, the opportunities that people need and that upward or downward mobility. And that's what we really want. We want people to have the ability to succeed. One of the things that I always liked about the United States is the concept of the American dream, that anyone can become wealthy and anyone can become successful if they have the heart and drive and skills that they need to achieve that. Now, not everybody has those. And socialists often say, well, that's not fair. Well, it isn't fair. Life is not fair. Not everybody's going to have those skills. And that's just life. But under a capitalist system, even the ones that don't have the skills, don't have the, the best talent or whatever, well, they'll be given opportunities that will meet their needs. So in the end, everybody wins. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you understand what I was trying to get at. I, I probably could have found some quicker way of saying it, but I didn't. <laughs> um, and I, I, I want you to um, think about this, about what does it really mean to have equal opportunities? What does it also mean to have freedom? And what does it mean to have uh, uh, 
the op like what does libertarianism really mean? So um, these are things to think about. Please comment below. Uh, check out my other videos. I do a lot of videos on this kind of topic. And um, thanks for watching. Bye for now.